Hey everyone, thanks for joining us for the second session of July's Advisor Ambassador Program. My name is Zach Hules and I work in the Communications and Marketing Department at the NAFA Home Office. We have a great speaker for you today, Jeff Chernoff. Jeff is a member of NAFA Florida and Jeff is involved as the Chair of NAFA's, NAFA Florida's Political Action Committee. Uh, today, Matt will, sorry, today Jeff no will be Jeff will be presenting networking as a young advisor. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to type them in the chat box or you can ask them at the end. You can turn on your video if you'd like as well um, and unmute yourselves. Um, but uh, I will go ahead and turn things over to Jeff. Excellent. Thanks, Zach. Well, uh, good afternoon. As Zach said, my name is uh, Jeff Chernoff and we'll go ahead and launch right into it. So during our time together, I want uh, to share my story uh, some examples of what I do to prospect, be able to provide some concrete examples of that process, what that looks like, and share how NAFA has impacted me. Uh, I've been uh, licensed since uh, 2011, and very quickly I uh, joined NAFA uh, the same month that I was licensed, and I would not be where I am today if not for that. Did you know in 2015, 11% of new advisors make it in our field? which uh, Im implies to say that 89% of our advisors do not make it within those first uh, two to five years. Our job is tough. And one of the things that NAFA exists in order to make our job a little bit easier, such as offering these types of uh, workshops and presentations. So my background, I'm actually a third generation insurance advisor. My grandfather started uh, for MetLife back in 1959. And I have something like 15 members of on both sides of my family who either retired from insurance, currently work in insurance, uh, or worked in insurance for a short time in their career. Uh, my background though is in a completely different industry. I actually manage residence halls on three college campuses at the University of North Dakota, Fair State University, which is a small town in Michigan, and Virginia Tech. Uh, we, my wife and I moved back to my hometown back in 2010 and um, uh, was looking for a job in higher education in 2010 in the state of Florida and particularly the Tampa Bay area was not a great time um, uh, in terms of looking for work. And so um, my father said, hey, come into the business, see what you think. No pressure one way or the other. Uh, but because most of the people that I knew uh, were outside the state of Florida or people that I knew in high school uh, or people that my father had sold insurance to over the years, there really wasn't a network to speak of. And so um, getting involved with, uh, with an organization like NAFA really helped, uh, helped me on the path. So what did I do? I actually uh, earned my uh, LUTCF designation, which is Life Underwriter Training Council Fellow. What, um, how that was beneficial was that uh, the very first course that I took was a prospecting course. And what was great about that is any of the prospects that I was working with, uh, the LUTCF really has you look at your, um, what you're doing and gives you the uh, requirement to incorporate that into the conversations you're having with prospects. From taking that course, I realized the value of creating short, medium, and long-term prospecting plans for various organizations that I belong to. So return on investment defined. What does that mean? I believe very strongly that if you are going to get involved with something, uh, oftentimes you have to uh, uh, put something out to get something back, whether that's a monetary amount, uh, a membership fee, or some type of a donation, or the time that you're spending um, when you could be spending prospecting or closing business, uh, as well as um, just an overall measurement. So I'm gonna pause the slideshow for just a quick minute to show you what I'm talking about. So I hid my clients' names, but we're gonna talk uh, in a little more detail, but wanted to show you what this looks like. So this is a spreadsheet of all the business that I conduct um, with the various types of uh, uh, licenses and insurance and financial services I work with. And so you can see um, with each transaction over here in this column, these are some of the organizations I'm gonna talk a little bit more about. And it allows me to actually kind of track what it is that I'm doing so that if I needed to uh, total it out for a given year, then I'm able to do that. 
Uh, if any of you would actually like a copy of this sort of spreadsheet, I would remove my client's names, but you can certainly um, reach out to Zach and he'll be happy to um, uh, provide this information over to me. And I believe Zach also has my contact information. So going back to the, the presentation. So short-term prospecting, what is that? I define short-term prospecting as someone that within a three-month period of time yeah, uh, Hold a fucking minute, and so I've got to slide this over and pull it out and put it back in, so it'll fucking. Uh, so with sh uh, short-term prospecting, uh, I define that as uh, zero to three months, and so if anyone um, from the time that you meet them to about three months is the opportunity to close the sale. Uh, examples of short-term prospecting is joining leads or referral groups, uh, any sort of natural markets that you have, or any friends or family that are in need of the, the services that you offer. For me, a great example of that was a uh, leads group that I'm a part of in the Tampa Bay area. It's, uh, it's Partners and Network functions very similarly to a BNI uh, that certainly has more national recognition. Uh, but one of the things that I tried to do was have a one-on-one -on -one with each member that was a part of this group as quickly as possible. I wanted to find out what the other members' niche markets were and refer them so that uh, when they saw that I was in it to actually help them grow their business, that in turn they would then refer for me. Uh, I would consistently ask for referrals of those group members as well. And just to give you an idea, um, through the uh, first quarter of 2019, I actually have gotten a five time uh, ROI uh, just for the first quarter. Medium term prospecting. So a medium term prospect for me is someone that maybe it's uh, about a year, um, sometimes maybe two. And with these sorts of prospects, a lot of times you're not going to get something immediately. And so uh, I would encourage you that if you're looking for prospects getting involved with various organizations, you join something which has a passion of yours. So I'll talk about the Greater Tampa Chamber of Commerce. I'm very interested in the concept of economic development. And so that was part of the reason why I joined that organization. Uh, and even though I didn't get anything immediately, it really was very strong um, for me uh, just as, as an interest level of mine. I would also encourage you to get involved very quickly, as quickly as you can. Be patient, business will come. A lot of times with an organization, they feel like uh, they want to know who you are and, and demonstrate that your heart's in the right place and you're uh, joining these organizations for the right reasons and not necessarily just to get business. And so uh, for me, I joined uh, the Greater Tampa Chamber of Commerce. Uh, at, one, at the membership level that we enjoyed, or that we joined at, uh, there were certain events that were included as a part of our membership. And so I made sure to go to each and every one of those events. Uh, the joke I used to tell my office was if it's free, then it's for me. And I started showing up on such a regular basis that several staff members of the chamber approached me and said, hey, you're coming to these things. Have you thought about becoming an ambassador? An ambassador uh, committee, uh, they focus on um, helping new members feel welcome when joining the chamber. They attended a lot of the same events and kind of served as a friendly face. Uh, and by doing those sorts of efforts, within my first year, I actually got a six time return on investment. So long-term prospecting. Long-term prospect is someone that maybe it takes at least three years before you're ever going to close that piece of business. It really is uh, the concept of planting seeds and um, checking in with them from time to time. Maybe it's someone that is a young professional that um, uh, single, not, um, not in a long-term relationship, not interested in life insurance or not interested in disability income, but you know that over time they could be. And so kind of building and growing that relationship. But any organization to become a part of where you, uh, uh, where you're looking, as, uh, looking at this for long-term prospecting, you really should have zero expectation of business being earned within that uh, first year. And so the, the best thing that you can do is make it about others and how can you help them. And in turn, uh, it'll come back to you. If any of you are familiar with the book, Go Giver, uh, I highly recommend it. This particular uh, strategy or marketing strategy has been very effective and kind of how I view the world, which is part of the reason why I talk a lot about giving back to others before expecting something in return and kind of putting out that, that positive karma or whatever you want to call it, um, uh, the platinum rule as it, as it is. And so for me, an example of an organization that I belong to was Emerging Leaders of Tampa Bay. 
It's a young professional group made up of people age 21 to 35. Um, I'm a multi-line agent, and so uh, for me, these were potential prospects for people that maybe they were going to be buying their first home at some point. Maybe they were going to be purchasing life insurance at some point, but I didn't expect to get any sort of uh, return. Um, but when I joined, I ended up serving on three committees within the first couple of years. I eventually applied and joined uh, the leadership team in 2014 and became chair of the organization in 2017 and simply just showed up and people knew what it was that I did and was very involved. And so as you can see on the chart over here, the ROI in my first year, I didn't earn anything. In the second year, I didn't earn anything. My third year is when I started to get just a minuscule return. For every dollar I spent, I got $6.58. Starting in year four, you can see that it uh, all it more than quadrupled um, and so on and so forth. Now, I stopped being a member of the organization because I aged out. Um, uh, they, they ask you to move on to other opportunities once you turn 35. And so even in year eight, two years removed, I'm still getting a return on investment. Uh, and as you can see, for every dollar spent, it's $140.06. So um, you, it really is designed to be that long-term opportunity. So I wanted to spend a minute uh, and talk about how NAFA has helped me. I know some of you on the call, um, maybe this is the first time you're hearing about the National Association of Insurance and Financial Advisors. Uh, and so um, the, in NAFA uh, Tampa Bay, which is the, the chapter that I belong to in addition to NAFA Florida, um, our uh, chapter focuses on three different things. Every one of our meetings, there's some type of a sales idea. And I think our, uh, our longest serving member was a member of NAFA back in 1969. And although the insurance and financial services industry has changed quite a bit, the ideas and concepts have not necessarily. And so a good sales idea that worked in the 1960s and 70s can still be a strong idea today. And so we make sure that every one of our meetings has at least one, if not two. Additionally, there's, it serves as a great referral group. Not every single person that is a member of this organization um, offers the type of insurance and, and financial services that I do. And so being able to build that network as a referral source for people who are, you know, um, have good, strong ethics, um, think similarly to you, and you know that they're going to take care of your clients well. Additionally, and arguably the most important reason, is the advocacy of what, um, what our association does. As Zach mentioned, I currently serve as the NAFA Florida um, Insurance and Financial Advisors Political Committee Chair, and so um, believe very strongly in making sure that we build positive relationships uh, so that we can be able to advocate for our industry, advocate for our clients, advocate for other agents like ourselves. Additionally, some of the other things where I got tremendous value was training. So as I mentioned early on, the Life Underwriter Training Council Fellow it was a, a huge designation for me that really allowed me to know my business, what my niche and target markets were, and how to be able to uh, prospect for that, um, learning some complex um, uh, business markets, and really helped me grow as a professional. NAFA recently came out with the Life and Annuity Certified Professional designation. Uh, it is an accredited designation, and so you know that people that hold this designation, you can be proud to say that it really um, helps you stand apart as someone that understands life and annuities. And then the other training opportunity that I've been able to uh, take part in through my involvement with NAFA was the Leadership and Life Institute, or Lilly. And it's designed to be a personal development, a professional development, and really just kind of an overall business development um, uh, program to help you uh, step up to the next level. Uh, the other thing that NAFA really has helped me with is the courage of my convictions. Um, I, I joke a large part of what I do is asking people to make political contributions on behalf of candidates. And um, what I can tell you, uh, the stereotype, uh, the insurance and financial advisors, we are um, very cheap, myself included. And so we don't want to spend a lot of money on things. But my job is to be able to demonstrate how by making this small investment, we can really help shape positively our industry. And the, the corollary to that is that my clients actually like me and actually want to have conversations with me and are usually interested in spending money if it's going to benefit them in some way, shape, or form. And so it makes it much easier and I've become a more effective salesperson 
by utilizing some of the same skill sets that I use in being involved with the political committee here in Naples, Florida. Uh, additionally, uh, uh, this, these opportunities allows us to be able to create a network of our peers. Uh, the uh, ambassador program that um, the Young Advisor team puts out. Um, the reality is, is I want to say that the average um, insurance agency owner is something like 52 years of age. If you think about it over the next 15 to 20 years, the people that are on this call are going to be um, uh, involved in this uh, in this industry and so having a network of people that you can reach out to and kind of share hey I've had a bad day uh, really want some feedback it's maybe what I'm doing wrong so as I mentioned Zach has my contact information feel free to reach out to me um, whether it's some feedback about what you thought about the presentation or would love to hear your story what got you involved in this wonderful industry and I'll actually um, send a gift to you uh, simply just by shoot me an email or give me a a phone call. Uh, one of the pieces of feedback that was uh, I was asked in preparing for this presentation was, what's a list of organizations that I'm involved with where I've um, been able to make an impact? And so you see I have um, a few different organizations. The ones that I'm currently involved with, I, I listed active. Uh, and so um, uh, these are, I'm not going to spend too much time on the slide itself, but these are just an example of some of, some of the things. Um, I tend to try and get involved with activities that fall in, in the following cases. Um, organizations that where there's some type of civic component or political component. Um, my industry organization, which is why I choose to be a member of NAPA, and then also um, charitable nonprofits. And so um, you can see the things that I'm really active in, uh, for the most part, tend to kind of fall into some of those categories. So how do we do? I hope um, that uh, I did uh, an effective job of sharing my story, some of the things that I've done to prospect, giving some concrete examples of the process that I've utilized for the past uh, eight years, and then share how NAPA has truly impacted me. So this is kind of the Q&A portion. What was most impactful and what will you do differently or any sort of questions you may have about what we, we discussed. So Zach, I don't know if we have any questions or if anyone's put anything in the comments. Uh, I'm not seeing any right now, but if you do have any comments or questions, feel free to unmute yourselves and ask or type them in the chat box below. Okay. So just to kind of sum up and, and close, um, will you be part of the 11% or will you be part of the 89%? Uh, that's you, you kind of have to make that decision I will tell you that uh, especially early on in your career uh, there will be some some more bad days and there are good but you got to keep pushing forward you got to keep making calls or reaching out and prospecting prospecting truly is the life uh, life force of our business and so uh, the more prospecting that you do the more likely that someone's going to want to have an appointment with you and you can build um, from there and that really concludes um, the networking as a young advisor. Uh, again, if there are any questions, I'm happy to um, entertain them, or if you want to reach out to me privately, Zach certainly has my uh, contact information. And I'm going to go ahead and drop the uh, recruitment at NAFA.org in the chat. And if you do have any questions or you want to reach out to Jeff personally, um, go ahead and send me an email at recruitment at NAFA.org be happy to pass along any contact info or answer any questions that you have. But with that, I'd like to say thank you all for joining us today and uh, hope to see you next week for the next class as well. Um, and, uh, hope everyone has a great week. Thank you so much. All right, thank, thank you. Appreciate your time.